हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल गॉडलीवुड स्टूडियो को सब्सक्राइब करें और साथ ही हर नए वीडियो के अपडेट के लिए बेल आइकन को क्लिक करें Om Shanti and welcome back on another episode of Light of Knowledge where Sister Janki ji is back with us in our Godlywood studio. In our previous episode, Sister talked to us about how she was attracted to this knowledge of Raj Yoga and how she has used it to transform herself. Now today, we continue this conversation with her and she'll shed more light and how we can use this knowledge to better our life we'll also talk to her about her personal journey in more detail sister welcome to the show om shanti thank you we had such a beautiful conversation last time in which um, you put forth some very important issues about um, self transformation yes and uh, how love and compassion can go a long way in connecting with people uh today we're more interested in asking you when you first came into this knowledge it almost sounds like to you it was an immediate connection i mean you connected with the knowledge uh, right away so from the time you came into the knowledge to the time you were actually asked to leave malaysia and go overseas what was the time frame it took about Three four years okay. for me to leave the country, okay. and of course, at the beginning, my family, uh, children, uh, the other members of the family, they were all perturbed because being a woman and leaving the country and going to a new country where I do not know anyone, and uh, to start from zero, of course, they were perturbed. But I always had the faith. that if i am true to myself and true to the task uh that i'm given i would be a uh, successful so that was a very strong point in me i was very brave to have that kind of a vision it can be done mm-hmm. nothing is difficult but we have to put our heart and soul into it So it sounds like you had that confidence from very early on. Yes. Um and uh, maybe that's what Dadi Janki ji saw in you <laughs> when she first yes. told you. <laughs> right. But um regardless of the confidence and the faith that you carry yes. with yourself, I'm sure you must have had to face a lot of challenges. Yes. So could you please tell us what were the challenges and how did you deal with them? Firstly, challenges from the Lockick family, you know, bodily relations. Uh, some were for some were having questions some were concerned to follow up and help when needed so different kinds of reactions but what i thought to myself was i am an actor in my own situation and nobody can understand the situation from far away only i can deal with problems that come up on the spot so i worked a lot on myself and by myself because i had the confidence that if uh, there was no like uh, ulterior aim or motive uh, things would work out well may not be smooth but it will work out well so and i not- was i was quite uh, correct about this because i did meet a lot of challenges a lot from the local people from the government because we had to produce certificates we have to register we have to tell them what we were doing and to get all these papers done to register the center there's a lot of work and we have to go through many processes 
And then the local people, they're going to teach them something different, something new. And of course, there'll be questions. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to become by learning this? How are we going to change? Right. Will it change our, you know, identity? Absolutely. An identity crisis for them, you know, Absolutely. but not for me. So going through all this needs a lot of patience and faith that things will work out eventually. But you don't have a time frame that it should be done within one year or a certain period of time. Let it take its course, but it will be done. That faith needs to be there. And the other thing is, when people sort of doubt what you are doing and what you are going to share with them, uh, that doubt is very justified because you cannot trust anybody just like that. So you have to see them and be with them uh, over a period of time, see what they're doing, what their lifestyle is, how they are in private, how they are in public. So all these things people observe, mm -hmm. you know, private, public, and slowly they begin to see maybe something different, mm -hmm. uh, something better, something good. For example, if you show somebody a candle light, that's nice, it gives light. But if you show them a torch light, that's better. Right. So they can see the difference, that this is better, mm -hmm. that everything starts with me, mm -hmm. my happiness, my destiny, my path on this world as an actor, everything depends on me and I am responsible. I am the doer. I take the consequences and I have to look at myself. When they realize that this is what is the main thing in life, this is what everyone has to think about, then they start coming and they start learning and they ask about karma mm -hmm. or action reaction action response action interaction and also past deeds present deeds future deeds oh they have lots of questions and when you really sort of sit down and go through with them they are amazed they are so you know and wrapped in this they are so thrilled by what they hear and they come they come back. So, yeah. So, when the teacher is very convinced and happy, the students become convinced and happy. So, it's how you pass on the feelings of the heart, the faith, that positivity is the answer to all questions, mm -hmm. to all problems, that there's no other way. And there is a greater help. Like, if I'm weak, I'm sick, I have no power, I have no strength, I have no friends. It doesn't mean that I'm in a hopeless state. I have help. Mm -hmm. I can get help from the above, the one above. We call him God or the supreme soul or the supreme power. We can, if we can learn how to tap from that mm -hmm. source. Right. So we have like extra help coming right. that I'm not alone and there is help. And can I get that help? So this is when meditation helps. Mm -hmm. And meditation is the answer to all life's problems. At this point, Didi, I'd like to ask you, um, four years into the knowledge, did you feel personally equipped in terms of the knowledge that you had gathered to that point to be able to go into another country, like you said, a yes. completely different, different scenario yes. and share the knowledge. Was that enough time uh, that was given to you? To tell you frankly, there's never a time in your yogic life that you feel I'm okay. Mm -hmm. There's something more to do, something more to learn, something more to realize, something more to grow. It's always there. But as you keep on moving, and serving, and sharing, and doing, and learning. So the climb is gradual, mm. and it's natural. So even now, if you ask me, do you feel equipped? What must I say? Yes or no, or maybe a halfway. Any answer is okay. So it's a question of how I feel. And of course, I have many seniors. I've seen them 
so much more enlightened than me. I look up to them and I want to be like them. So the journey goes on. Could you uh, give us some examples? Uh, you said like when you moved into um, uh, Bali. Uh, could you give us some examples that stand out in your mind where you really had to have nothing but faith yes. in God and confidence in yourself mm -hmm. to see that situation through? Yes. I'd like to share something before that. Um, I have two children. Uh, when I told them that I was asked to leave the country, Malaysia, to serve in another country, uh, I told them, I'm your mother. I will never leave you. You know, how can a mother leave her children? So I had that feeling that I can never separate from them, mm -hmm. that I'm part of them and they're schooling. So I told them, I'm not going. They asked me to go, my seniors, but I'm not going. And then they turned back and told me, Mother, you are taking care of two of us. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, if you go to a new place and you start a center, you can take care of 100 people. Wow. Two or 100. Right. Small or big, mm -hmm. you're free. Mm -hmm. Do what you like. And that gave me the green light to be on my own. So this was my first obstacle, right. which I had fear of. I thought, uh, even if I leave my children, they will not leave me. And so that kind of a pull would be there. But they were the first ones to say yes. And so my heart said, Yes, and I never looked back. Isn't that something, again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, yes. to have such a cooperative family. Yes. And uh, it's unbelievable, you know, children at that age, they were able to see the bigger picture. Yes. They true. did not stay limited in their little niche, but they were able to, you know, willing to let you go in order to help everyone And else. now, Swati, I have hundreds of children. Isn't so that beautiful? It's an unlimited family, yeah. and it's such a good feeling that I have not abandoned them, they have not abandoned me, we are still together, we are still loving, we are still one family, and I have a bigger family. So it's, it's more fortune, mm -hmm. more, you know, unlimitedness, more happiness. Right. So it's not losing, but gaining. It's not becoming smaller, but becoming bigger. Right. Um, earlier when you talked about going to another country and talking about the principles of uh, Brahma Kumaris, although it's universal. I mean, you know, yeah. every religion is telling you the same thing, but there are a few things which are specific to a teaching. How did the people, with all the fears that they had, how did they take up this knowledge? Yeah, this is a very sensitive thing, you know. So normally when uh, people come for the first time, for the first few times, you just have to be loving. Once they sort of see you as a friend, a friend who can understand, uh, they will share their fears. For example, change of diet. So I can tell them, uh, not to worry, don't make this like a burden in your mind, but think about it. Think about it. What you eat, is it making you happy? Because people say, you are what you eat. Right. And I tell them, you see an elephant, walking so gracefully, royal, see a horse, very strong, can run fast, beautiful body. Look at a um, deer, it just jumps with joy from place to place. Look at all these animals and what do they eat? Grass. Just grass, <laughs> leaves. They're herbivorous. Yes. And look at the tiger. What does it do? It hides, it pounces. Look at the crocodile, it hides under the water and then it grabs the victim. So, our food patterns also has a big impact on our way of thinking, our character and how we behave. You know, this is a very important uh, aspect of uh, this conversation. I'm sure there are some viewers out there who are contemplating becoming vegetarians. So could you please elaborate a little bit more on the impact that our food has on our mind and our 
thorough body and mind health. Yes, as I said earlier, there is this saying, you are what you eat. Now, when we look at the anatomy of the human body, it is not made for meat eating. For example, we don't have this the teeth, teeth to, you know, right. to tear flesh, but we grind our food, we chew our food, and our whole digestive system is not made for meat. Mm -hmm. It's made for vegetarian food. And so if we have the wrong kind of diet, we sort of um, uh, give sorrow to the body and we stress out the body. But if we give the, give the food, the kind of food that the body wants, if we can just give that kind of food, the body is relaxed, there's no tension, the muscles are free, and the soul that's acting in the body has a lot of freedom to think unlimited, not to worry about the body and not to be concerned about the body and take care of the body. So it's much freer. It has more time. People nowadays, they say, I have no time. I have to go to the hospital. I have to take my medicines. I am stressed out. I have to rest. But when the body is just given the right kind of food and exercise, sleep, that's enough. So the body doesn't use up much of the energy of the soul. Mm -hmm. And the soul has more time to concentrate on other matters. Mm -hmm. So it's very good to be vegetarian. And the other thing about meditation is, when we teach about values, we teach um, ahimsa, mm -hmm. not to be uh, cruel, ahimsa. So what is ahimsa? Uh, to kill, to cause pain, to cause sorrow, to take away, to grab, to kill. These are all very uh, negative uh, actions. And if we can stop doing all that, and we can just have more of, um, vegetarian food that is more simple and no himsa in that, that's good. Coming back to the center that you opened yes. in uh, Bali, I was wondering um, how long did it take people to be comfortable and uh, say, okay, you know, there is some truth in what they're saying, mm. or this is something that I can really take up in my life. Mm. Because I know there are a lot of people out there who are looking for the real thing. Yes. So what was like the time lag? I mean, did you feel there were times when you thought, oh my God, I'm here, you know, yeah. and uh, what's happening? Or did mm. the traffic of people start right away? Or how did that go? No, people coming uh, started coming in slowly. Okay. And when you talk to them about food, it's a very taboo thing mm -hmm. because they are so used to meat. So what I used to do was to give them like a puri with some sabji, with some vegetable. Uh, and when they looked at it, they said, where's the rice? And where's the meat? They said, no, this is your food. And they take a little bit, they taste a little bit. It sounds so funny. And they throw it in the dustbin. Mm. So that was the beginning, the right. beginning of the, the long you know, sure. road to vegetarianism. Okay. They threw away the puri, they mm. threw away the alu, sabji, and that's it. But slowly, I uh, introduced chapati, dal curry, and some spices, and some, you know. And slowly, the taste buds change. And they tell me, now I cannot take meat, even if you give me... I have this taste for it. So it grows naturally. So when your taste buds, uh, you know, change and you, you appreciate something different and it makes you feel good and light and it doesn't give you that feeling of heaviness. So they say, now I have this taste for meat. I never told them to give up meat. I just introduced this and they gave up. So it may take some time, three months, six months, up to one year but it does happen in a very natural way instead of saying stop me otherwise you cannot meditate oh, no right. they just do it naturally this is a very beautiful message uh, don't force anyone to do something yes. that they're not used to yes. but let it happen gradually and let them taste something else right. give them an alternative exactly. show the you know benefits of that let them feel the benefits experience it and then Say, yeah, this is nice, easy to cook, cheap, 
and better and I feel good. I can touch myself. I can feel myself. I pray in a more concentrated, focused way. So they come up with all these things and they say, when I go to the temple, I feel good. So you see, this, the changes mm -hmm. have to be felt by them, exactly. experienced by them. And they share with me and I tell myself, well, this is it. You know, it has to come in a natural flowing way. Right. They must be comfortable with what they're doing right. instead of forcing and then they revert back to the old style of living. That's, That's a very important uh, yes. point that you've just made here. Yes. That if it comes from force, then they may go back yes. to what they were doing before. That's And that right. defeats the purpose of this yes. whole aspect. You know, I was just curious to know, after you train them maybe into vegetarian food, um, are they able to cook that for themselves now? Or do they still rely on you for maybe some kind of input? To tell you frankly, they are better cooks than oh, me. No. <laughs> now what they tell me wow. is, sister, try this. I read it in the, in the newspaper, this recipe. <laughs> and they are giving me new vegetarian recipes. Wow. And they are giving me new vegetarian food that I have not tasted. Isn't so that? just imagine, they make bhog for baba. They have been vegetarians for years and they have been living a pure lifestyle for years and they're so happy. They have time to come to the center, to serve in the center and they are very uh, happy doing it. No forcing and they all have happy faces when they work and when they serve, they are happy. So you can see from the way they do uh, this uh, karma yoga cooking, they don't feel tired. They don't feel exhausted. They're not sweating. They look fresh and happy. And I think that's the great wonder mm -hmm. of uh, meditation, of Raja Yoga meditation and food. Right. Sister, I thank you for this enlightening conversation. And uh, we will definitely continue this in our uh, next episode. So thank you so much. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Sister has talked about many different aspects today. She talked about food, vegetarian food, and the important message in this is please don't force anyone to follow any particular belief that you may hold in your heart. Let them try it out for themselves first and let them come to the conclusion that yes, this is it for me and this is what I want to follow. We will continue this beautiful discussion in our next episode and we definitely look forward to seeing you again. Until then, take care. हमारे YouTube चैनल Godlywood Studio को सब्सक्राइब करें और साथ ही हर नए वीडियो के अपडेट के लिए बेल आइकन को क्लिक करें